Alright, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be freezing some yeast, um, just standard liquid yeast. You can use slurry from your fermenter, you can use um, leftover from a starter if you overbuild your starter. Or, like me today, I'll be uh, freezing a packet of yeast, um, just because I'm not going to use this for a little while. I know I need to uh, organise some uh, other ingredients, so by the time I get around to organising that and using this yeast, it'll be a little bit closer to its uh, use-by date, so I'd rather preserve it while I can. I'm going to have to build a starter anyway, so I'll just build a starter from uh, one of these vials instead of building it from the packet. Now, I'm splitting this between five vials today. I know that this is a 125 milliliter packet. My vials are 50 milliliters. I have uh, 100 mils of glycerin and water mixture here. The glycerin uh, is about 25% of the volume in the container, so 25 mils of glycerin and uh, 75 mils of water. I've got a uh, just a bit of ethanol in this uh, beaker. This is what I'm going to use to pour my yeast into. Um, now I'm not using the smack pack uh, today, so. I'm not going to be breaking the packet um, that's inside the Waze packets, the activator. Without the activator, it's 100 mils of yeast. With the activator, it would be 125 mils. So just for ease of using 20 mil syringes, I'm doing 20 mils. 20 times 5 is 100. So I will be doing uh, 20 mil doses of glycerin solution and then 20 ml dose of yeast into these vials here. Once they've been filled, I'll be placing them into a uh, bath of isopropyl alcohol and I'll place them in the freezer. Uh, I've got a chest freezer at the back that um, I store my yeast and hops and things in, so I've got some uh, waste 2206 out in the freezer at the moment uh, that I'll be adding this to. Once they're all together, I just once they're frozen and all together and labelled and everything like that, I pop them into a uh, soft cooler bag just with an ice brick in it just for when the defrost cycle goes on the freezer. That way it doesn't uh, potentially unfreeze the yeast and then refreeze it when it's not in the alcohol solution. So the alcohol solution's there just to stop it from freezing really quickly. Just want to slow down the freezing process. Obviously the gl glycerin does the same thing. Um, just helps preserve the, the yeast cells in there. So all of these uh, vials are loosened and the lids are loosened and they're ready to go. I just need to get my activator, uh, my waves activator pack and uh, give that a quick little sanitize with ethanol. Stand that up. And I've got my scissors. And I will open the cryo preservative as well. So these syringes come um, sterilized. They are uh, basically heat treated uh, so in the packet so they're actually able to be used straight from the packet. Now I'll pop the cryo preservative in first. So we'll just measure out around 20 mils. We will take the lid off and dose that in. Pop the lid back on, and popping the lid back on just prevents anything uh, getting into there from the air. Um, sometimes you might have some bugs around or things like that, depending on where you're doing it. And you don't want anything falling into the containers. So when we get to the end here, I'm going to have to tilt the glass just because I know that this is pretty much 100 mils exactly. I can also tip the glass into the vial, tip the remaining amount into the vials. Scoop up the last little bit. Look at that, right on 20 mils. So I've got a tiny little bit left. So 
So that's the cryopreservative done. I pretty much don't want anything else to do with the cryopreservative right now. That's that done. So the next step is to open the yeast packet or the yeast packet or your uh, slurry of yeast. I'm just going to give this a little shake just to make sure it's mixed. Now it's not the end of the world if you don't get every single bit of yeast out of here. You are making the starter anyway. So as long as you're building your starter to above the recommended amount. I'll just pop that over to the side. So now we'll grab our second syringe of 20 mils. Open it up, just pop it down. And we're good to go. So I know this is a little bit less than 100, so I'm just going to dose just under by maybe 2 mils under per. That'll save me about 10 mils. Just dose that in, pop the lid back on just loosely. It's uh, quite a rainy day here today. Now if I get to the third one, or the last one, and I'm a bit short, I can just spread the rest between the other four. Oh, didn't put the lid back on that one. Okay, so this one we're getting the full 20, so I'll go back each other one with one mil each if I can. So I've still got a few mils here which is great. Finish dosing one mil in each. And I did these two a little bit shorter, so I'll give them an extra. And there we go. That is essentially all you need to do. You just tighten them up, give them a mix to make sure the glycerin and yeast solutions are properly. Uh, mixed together, that there's not pockets of glycerin that are not mixed with the yeast slurry. So to do that, we just shake it back and forth. So it's handy to have a little bit of space in here. You don't want it completely full. So that one's good. This one's good. These are actually looking really good. It's a nice creamy uh, coloured yeast. I'm just glad that it's super fresh and it's managed to survive the, the trip here okay. It was quite quite warm when it got shipped here so I uh, was a bit concerned that it wouldn't necessarily be in a suitable uh, condition. So as I mentioned before I will be storing these in a container with some isopropyl alcohol to help them freeze. So just place them in this little bath here and then I will take this out to my freezer. Uh, so I fit five in here uh, pretty much exactly. Now the alcohol does cover the yeast solution uh, in the, the vials. Uh, you do want them some submerged but because there is air in there they do float as well. So like with anything that floats it kind of tries to make its own level. So um, they will be perfectly fine. So from this point, I'll put this in my freezer. Uh, I've got a chest freezer that has the wire shelving in it. So I'll place that on the shelf. In 24 hours, I'll remove the vials from this alcohol solution and I'll keep the alcohol solution in the fridge for next time. So it doesn't have to re-chill the alcohol. 
uh, and then I will take the vials out, I will label them, and then I will put them in my cooler bag with uh, the rest of my yeast bank. This yeast was uh, 1469. It's the West Yorkshire yeast, but this is probably one of my favourite uh, ale strains. I use it in all sorts of things. Um, I've used it in obviously English beers, bitters, milds. The other yeast I've got on hand frozen is uh, Y yeast 2206. That is the Bavarian lager strain. Now that is one of my all-time favourite lager strains. I know a lot of people use 2124 or the 3470, I believe it is, in the um, Saflaga uh, dry strain. That is a great yeast. It's super effective, obviously ferments out well. It's used by many, many breweries around the world, and it's quite good. Uh, my personal preference though, if you're looking for something a little bit different, something with a lot of, um, like a really nice yeast character that shines through with the malt, Definitely try the Bavarian Lager Strain from Y Yeast. Unfortunately, being in a regional location in Australia, I don't have access to suppliers of yeast uh, close to me. My nearest is about an hour and a half drive away, uh, and they don't generally stock liquid yeast. Uh, it's an order in only thing. So, with this method as well, you actually get the benefit of being able to build one of these vials into a pitchable uh, volume of yeast, and then you can actually overbuild that, pitch a little bit of that yeast into another starter and then split that starter. So you've got uh, generational capability. You can also take some of the slurry from the, the next batch you brew and you can split that out into uh, vials here like this. And you can effectively do that in a higher density if you know what your yeast volume will be uh, in that or your viable yeast volume will be. So for those of you who nerd out on brewing, um, I will be uh, procuring, procuring a, for those of you who nerd out on yeast and brewing science, I will be getting a microscope. I'm hoping to be able to uh, get one with the camera attachment so I can film a uh, yeast cell count. Uh, it's something that we did in the brewery. Uh, we would uh, record the volume of yeast, we'd take a sample of that yeast and we would uh, break it down to a measurable level. Uh, so we'd record the dilution and then we would uh, calculate uh, based on the count of that one mil sample on a hemocytometer, and we would calculate the yeast. For this particular process, I do want to actually record the uh, amount of yeast, the, or the concentration of yeast in, in number of cells. So I know that that packet of Y yeast has 100 billion cells. I've split that uh, pretty consistently across the five vials. So that's 20 billion cells. Based on the viability of the packet, uh, with the date, that we get on the packet, we can calculate uh, how many expected yeast cells there will be. So for this example, don't need to go into the level of measuring the number of cells. You've got a rough idea of uh, how many cells are in the pitch. Uh, so I know roughly per vial, I've got 18 billion yeast cells. If I freeze that and I calculate my starter based on the 18 billion or even 15 billion, then I know how much I need to uh, in increase my starter in size, uh, how, how many steps I need to do to achieve a proper proper pitch. That just about wraps up this video. If you have any questions, uh, please leave it down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. That just about wraps up this video. If you like this type of content, uh, please subscribe to the channel. There'll be more of it coming. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, uh, please leave it down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. As I mentioned, I did uh, follow the process from Brewlosophy. Uh, Martin did a great job of communicating the, the process in video, so uh, I'll leave it to, to his video to actually showcase the cryopreservative creation and uh, pressure canning process there. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to give it a crack. And we'll leave it there. Cheers. Thanks for watching.